Good afternoon. Good morning to everyone. Um, I'm extremely excited to uh, present you an ambassador uh, across the sustainable uh, uh, space, a name that everyone um, uh, is, is uh, known about and, and uh, needs to understand and, and figure out how uh, emotionally attached he is to uh, technology and education reforms and sustainability. We, he is going to present to us an amazing story about the importance of uh, CO2 emission and, and the like. So Jason Dodier is co-founder of Grain, uh, an interesting ecosystem that he's going to lay down just for us. So uh, Jason, please, the floor is yours. Very excited to hear more about Grain and what you try to achieve together here. Oh, uh, it's great to be back at One Business World. I want to give you guys a hand too, by the way, because without a platform like this, these stories, visions, and insights don't get where they need to go. And I've said it before, I think an understanding of the natural world and what's in it as a source of not only great curiosity, but great fulfillment. And I can tell you as somebody who's listened to many of the other founders on this platform, this is a place where you get a lot of curiosity, addressed, but also a lot of fulfillment. I come out of this every time uh, more energized about the future and where we're headed. I I'll just open. So I'm very excited today because I'm going to get an opportunity to give you all a bit of a demo. So show you at a high level what it is we've been building uh, since the last discussion of One Business World at Grain. And, and for starters, for those who are not familiar with Grain, so Green e Ecosystem, we're essentially the turbo tax for carbon offsets. And what that means is uh, first carbon credits for those who aren't familiar with it. This is a pathway to help avoid and sequester carbon from the atmosphere and really decrease the rate of global warming. So we've talked about the things that are necessary, uh, particularly the market for carbon offsets is increasingly in need of more high quality credits that are de you know, demonstrating durability, longer timeframes to sequestra uh, sequestration and really being associated with social and environmental co-benefits. I think the big thing for me is ensuring we do away with green hushing and green washing, and we're implementing projects that have really good co-benefits and, and elements that are doing good for communities as well. And part of that, uh, Stefan, is reducing inputs such as water, fertilizers, chemicals, other harmful elements that go into the Earth's natural carbon sinks. And the goal of grain, as you're gonna see momentarily, is we wanna help carbon dioxide removal project developers turn their trash into treasure. Uh, and what does that mean? Well, it means looking at their eligibility. What do they actually have and the various methodologies available in carbon markets today to be eligible for carbon credits? That's number one. Number two, what is their net sequestration? So if you think about an end-to-end -end process of when you're actually procuring waste material, converting that material into an output and then using it at an end site. What's the net sequestration? How much carbon is emitted in that process? And then the biggest piece uh, is what's the economics? So thinking about project profitability, because as we all know, yes, the IRA has been a, a game changer here in the US. Europe has been in well ahead when it comes to the decarbonization transition. But how do you take that money and unlock private capital? And I think that when you look at the circular economy story and you think about waste from consumption as an input to new production, this is a really, really interesting, uh, interesting thesis and something that we're very, very vested in. And two last things before I go into the demo, just for context, last year we sequestered about 37,000 metric tons of CO2. We need to get to a baseline of at least 500 million metric tons. We'd like to get there before 2030. The voluntary carbon market, uh, we see scaling from 10 to 40 billion annually by 2030 in alignment with the United Nations Development Program. Uh, we've seen it, you know, Stefan, you've seen the numbers. It's roughly $330 billion in, in, of an annual financing gap for nature-based solutions. And that's what we're very focused in right now at Grain. And uh, I wanna highlight the flywheel. I mean, you look at the two biggest flywheels and we're gonna hear a lot about these subsets from the other presenters, EVs and renewables. Uh, but what does it take to get a flywheel going around carbon removals? And that's what Grain's trying to do, being at the cutting edge. And it's capturing and accelerating momentum, starting with scale, emphasizing learnings, efficiencies, uh, project economics. And that goes into really understanding, uh, drive, that really goes into tending to drive down costs 
and understanding where you put your yourself as a company in the right place at the right time to identify your success metrics for your projects, uh, how to leverage private and public investment dollars, and then really bringing more clarity into the space. And I think this is a good segue into doing a quick demonstration to show how Grain is providing guidance for businesses to get access to carbon markets and look at overall uh, project economics. So I'm going to share my screen. Jason, and we'll just, just before yes. you start with the demos, you know, as 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 a as a great ambassador as you've been so far, and as you mentioned, you know, the number of and the effort that you put on the education to try to bring knowledge at the right place in order to identify profitable projects, private profitable. You know, two quick questions. One is, uh, what do you really are looking at in terms of? Funding, uh, fundraising requirement. If you can highlight that a little bit, if this is something that you can enlighten us. And also, second one is that I know how far are we from, you know, being at the place where you really want to be in terms of takeoff. So two fantastic questions. I think that uh, first of all, if you look at the pie today, six billion dollars has been allocated for industrial decarbonization here in the U.S. These are the hard to abate sectors. Uh, we believe 50% of the problem today in terms of decarbonization can be solved through electrification and energy efficiency measures. Uh, the rest really needs to come through accelerating the work that's being done in the DOE loan office. I think there was a huge, there was a huge article actually last week that talked about the work that Jigger Shaw and the, lo the loan program is doing. There's $400 billion there. There's $20 billion being dedicated within the IRA for smart agriculture projects. And there's a lot of incentives right now, Stefan, that are coming across that are rebating farmers and individuals. As an example, one of the things we're focused on here at Grain is accelerating biochar projects. Um, so the incentives to farmers to use biochar uh, to an, improve yields, but also to enhance sequestration uh, and, and remove those heavy input costs that are uh, just battering us as a society when it comes to inefficiencies. The other thing I'll highlight is uh, there, there's something that doesn't get talked about enough, which is really the core carbon principles. So if you think about all the money that's going into this space and how it needs to be allocated, it's typically a 70-30 split. 70% is going to come from private, public-private partnerships, uh, leveraging institutional capital and, and streaming agreements. That's the other thing we're seeing coming from uh, pre-purchases of carbon credits, which is a very important mechanism. But you have to think about emissions impact, which is additionality, permanence, robust quantification, and making sure we have no double counting. This is where a lot of the registries come in. Governance is huge. So how are we tracking? How are we managing? What's the transparency? And then the, the independent third-party validation verification. And then programs such as many of the ones that you have leadership roles in, sustainable development. So benefits and safeguards. And then what are the different contributions to the net zero transition? So it goes hand in hand leveraging these vehicles that are there both in the public and private sector, and then understanding the frameworks tied to the core carbon principles and tied to the groups that are out there, like the Integrity Council um, for the Voluntary Carbon Market and the Voluntary Carbon Market Integrity Initiative coming together to drive durability and transparency. So they have to go hand in hand. So Jason, we really want to see that demo because that's... Uh, <laughs> and you by the way, I can talk about, about it. You the goal... <laughs> And so, so just in, in short, uh, uh, one million, half a million. Uh, what? How much you feel that you, grain needs to to reach the the launching path? Let's say. Well, for for us at grain, it's really uh, it's a show me moment right now for carbon removal projects. We are looking to work with uh, a handful of carbon dioxide removal project developers that have opportunities to scale uh, and opportunities to do. To, to take large amounts of waste feedstock and turn that into output. So I'll give you an example. Uh, an ideal opportunity might be looking at a sugar mill uh, that has hundreds of thousands of tons of bag ass, as an example, as an output. So how do we take that bag ass and turn it into biochar and other revenue streams, Stefan? Or um, you know, look at the forest fires that were recently happening in Canada that we experienced here in New York City. We had massive air quality issues. Uh, the sky was very, very hazy. That was coming from woody biomass and essentially the, the, the floor of the forest being a tinderbox. So we could, have, we could take those materials and turn them into outputs, turn them into bio oil, turn them into wood vinegar. So part of grain is unlocking those big art of the possible projects 
and then deriving decentralized scale for other project developers. And you'll see uh, in a moment here, yeah, yeah. Go how, ahead, how Jason. people do that. Show us, show us that because we need clean hair. We absolutely need clean hair, especially in New York. So go ahead, show us your demo. We're very excited to see this uh, coming up. Happy to do it. And actually, one of one of our team members is in Netherlands right now, and he messaged me yesterday yesterday saying that there was a uh, air quality issues and to stay inside. I didn't look in detail, but it's 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 hitting all of us. Obviously, New York New York City's seen it more. But basically, if you're a a, a project developer, uh, this is what our homepage looks like today. So you're going to come here. We're going to give you a little bit of an overview on how to unlock carbon removal offsets for your project opportunity to drive viability. And really the, the whole goal is to make it as easy as possible. So on the grain platform, you're gonna check your eligibility. You're gonna quantify the carbon removals. As I said, this life cycle assessment, where we're gonna look at GHG sequestration. And then we're gonna help you with the economics. And then we're gonna to put together a high level output that we can bring to investors, different type of investors, whether they're traditional credit, debt, equity, pre-purchase investors for offsets to help them understand what your project might be able to derive for output from an output perspective and if they want to move forward with deeper diligence and for those after this session that want to look we've got a nice little video uh, that we launched that kind of gives a high level on the platform uh, and basically you're going to start here and you're going to create you're going to create a profile so you want to create a profile you're going to put your email password you can you could do it via linkedin and other social uh, so social media sources and once you create a profile you're going to have all your projects teed up in here so very, very easy to find. And your project can be based on different methodologies. You might have a project that is right now we're very focused on biochar, but down the line, you could have a mangrove project or a direct air capture project. So it's going it's to span, it's going to span the scope and scale. Today, what you would do is if you've got a new project, you're going to essentially select, uh, is it, is it going to be pure earth, which is one of the biochar methodologies? or Vera VCS, and Vera is the, is the largest, uh, they've serialized the most, most credits to date uh, in carbon markets. And then you're gonna click on, you're gonna click on create project. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a screen that looks like that. Again, today I prepared this as a demo. When you go in there, you're gonna have to actually enter real information so you can go end to end because each question is dependent on the prior question to take you through. Very briefly, eligibility looks something like this. So once you select your methodology, we're going to take you through a dynamic questionnaire. And typically it takes about 25 minutes where you're selecting the type of biomass that is gonna be your feedstock. You're going to, you're gonna answer questions, you know, what is the primary source of the biomass? You have a lot of times today, Stefan, in the US, it's either left to decay, it's taken to a landfill or it's burned. Obviously, again, contributing to a lot of the issues we see. Are you gonna put a health and safety program in place? Is it pyrolysis, gasification, torrefaction? Typically, uh, gasification and pyrolysis are the two major forms. Do you know the final end use of your biochar? The three biggest end uses today, soil amendment, water filtration, and we're starting to see more around cement. Uh, Carbon Quest is a great example of that. How far is it going to travel? And you, you proceed in this, in this mechanism. And again, after about 20, 25 minutes, hopefully you're going to be eligible. So we're going to tell you what methodology you're, methodologies you're eligible for. The other cool thing that you'll see in the live platform, Stefan, if you're not eligible, we'll tell you why you're not eligible. And then from there, really, really quickly, you're going to go through the processing piece. In the grain platform today, you've got, you've got pull downs to pre-select technologies. Uh, and that's going to, the algorithm obviously is going to plug that information and do the, do the calculations. If, you're, if your technology is not in there or if it's proprietary, very simple. You enter the information in. What's the processing speeds, yield of your equipment? Are you going to lease or buy the equipment, et cetera? You confirm it's grabbing the data points, Stefan, as you go. So sifters, drums, dryers for paralysis. Again, you're answering basic questions. This section will take about 30, 35 minutes. And the output is really interesting because you come to a screen like this. Based on your answers, your carbon content is roughly 19,945 metric tons. The carbon emitted throughout your process is roughly 4140. So the grain estimation today, if your data inputs are correct, is you're eligible for 15,800 carbon credits a year. So it gives you a great insight on a revenue stream that you might normally not have had. Highly likely you wouldn't have had that in there. The last piece 
just to put the uh, icing on the cake, so to speak, is the profitability. So here you're entering in the different revenue line items. So as I said earlier, there could be five or six different revenue streams to a biochar project. Uh, your expenses are getting pulled automatically based on the answers to the questions. If there's an expense item that's missing, we will flag it and, and support you with putting that in there. We know the carbon expenses for a project, so those are pulled automatically. We look at your cash impacts, your NPVs, the IRRs, and this is really the secret sauce that makes it very special. Once you put in information about your project, your headshots, you click, I'd like my fundraising documents. You get a two-pager that looks like this, Stefan. Where's your project? What's the investment need? We look at other you know, key mechanisms. What's the category? Is it high tech, low tech? We look at, we present the risk factors for a project, the team, images on the team, and then kind of a high level. What's the commercial structure the project developer would consider over a seven year vintage? How many metric tons are being sequestered? High level inputs. And then we take this and we bring it to the investors in our network in, in the hopes of helping these projects get financed and in parallel, we're helping get them USDA back loan funding as well. So they don't lose that opportunity. So that was a lot of stuff, but in a nutshell, that is what grain is supporting to do and build out the flywheel for carbon removal technologies and projects. It is extremely impressive, Jason. Uh, you know, I take two <laughs> big things out and I, two big things. One thing they always say, if you can't measure it, you can't fix it. So uh, the, the, the flow of logic of measurement element is absolutely crucial to the success of grain. The second one that I took out of, of your presentation is this very powerful way of creating new source of revenues. I mean, if you think about it, you know, the millions of agricultures and farmers and the like that are there, they can't turn what they have in waste management into real uh, revenue generated uh, uh, values. So the, the, you, know, you are doing something extremely critical and important, helping those people to actually generate new revenues out of waste for the good of the planet. I mean, this is extremely powerful. So very, very impressed. I'm short of time, unfortunately, to take additional questions from the audience, but I have to say that uh, you deserve a, a round of applause, not so much us. We just you know, put you on the show, but what you have just shown us is, is mind blowing. So that's, you were the first and uh, the third, sorry, of our sustainable road this morning, but uh, you know, you fish in, finish with this, the cherry on the cake. Thank you so much, Jason. Yeah. This was Jason Doji, he's co-founder of Grain, and um, we're very excited to have him with us today. And we hope to see him again in uh, February for, for the next uh, session, see how we progress uh, so, uh, from here to there. Thank you, Jason. Bye. Always a privilege. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the session. Bye.